1981 brought on the masterful, incredibly interesting tabletop units. Made by Coleco. Tabletop games, baby. They look just like arcade games. You had the side art on them. You had the marquee. Donkey Kong and Midway's Pac-Man and Galaxia. The arcade games you can take home with you from Coleco. Some of the original Pac-Man artwork on this one. Like Pac-Man with feet. Yeah, I never understood this. I mean, it's it kind of looks more like a ghost than an actual Pac-Man, and he looks kind of like perverted. He looks like a cracked out, like, you know, testicle with legs and red eyes. It's kind of messed up. You had the control panel with the joysticks. These were really cool because uh, you can play little handhelds and like a little game in a watch, or you can play something looks like a freaking arcade machine right in your home. And you know what? For the most part, they were decent games. It was basically like the power of the arcade in the palm of your hand. Except it didn't quite fit in the palm of your hand. And it wasn't really the power of the arcade. So, yeah. Well, the Donkey Kong one even has two levels represented in it, which is crazy. Most of, them, most of them would only have one, but that one's got the, uh, the jump the barrels and the girders uh, worked into it. So you had Coleco getting on the, on the action, licensing the Nintendo stuff. Nintendo, Game & Watch tabletops, they had those. You had, um, let's see, Antex came out with, with their versions. I think they did, uh, they did Defender, I believe. Um, so you had all of these companies getting in on the action with these guys. I wanted one so bad, my parents were like, no. <laughs> you know, you had a lot of handheld LCD handhelds that were cool. I mean, this was before you had a lot of, uh, you know, interchangeable cartridge, handheld portable gaming devices or anything like that. So LCD handhelds, yeah, that makes sense. But to have something that's so stationary and kind of big and bulky, I, I never really understood the appeal. And I love these things because they tend to use VFD displays, vacuum fluorescent displays, which um, have all of the limitations of an LCD display, but it uses fluorescent light to create a very bright, colorful picture on the screen. So they look nice and they're fun to play, um, and they're appealing just from a design standpoint. By no means are these perfect, but they're excellent for what they are. It wasn't anything I really wanted. I would rather have something that was handheld that could take with me in the car. Uh, didn't, you know, take 15 gigawatts of electricity to run. And it takes four C batteries. Four very old, ever ready C batteries. <laughs> Apparently not ready because this unit is not working. This one is off. These are ever not ready. The only thing I didn't like about these, back then these were expensive. They're still expensive. The only kids I knew that had these were the freaking rich kids that lived across town that had like five of these. And I couldn't get one of them. Yeah, but I got them now. I always hated that one kid in school who just like, just got everything. Just every little freaking everything that came out. Oh, uh, look at me, I caught an NES. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got the Super yeah. Nintendo. Oh, I got the Nintendo 64. And now they're, they're highly, highly collectible and highly, highly valuable. Um, they're, they're not that cheap to, to, to acquire these days. Yeah. I got a 3DO. Mmm. I freaking hated those kids. I know. School. I remember I went to it's his like, house. Oh, how the hell did you get a $600 because I'm rich and white? Eh, people bought them, I guess. Mostly collectors buy them now because... Eh. 